Welcome to another research methods video. This is graphing in Excel, part 2. You probably still have the DICE data spreadsheet open from part 1. If not, go to Blackboard and open the graphing data spreadsheet now. You may need to click on the tab labeled DICE data in the bottom left hand corner of your spreadsheet. Do this now. This time we will work with the data for two DICE. To get started, Click and drag to highlight the labels and the data in cells L6 through M19 as shown here. Pause the video and do this now. Like you did to make your pie graph, we now want to click on the insert menu at the top of the page. Choose column, and then clustered column, as shown here. Pause the video and do this now. Here is the graph that is created. Notice that the red and blue columns represent our average values and what probability theory said we should get. The reason that it was important to highlight the column labels was so that our legend would be correct. If you look at the values on the side axis you'll see these represent the number of times we got each possible value, and they are correct. But, if you look at the labels on the bottom axis, you'll see that they are not right. Excel knows we have 11 different values, so it puts the numbers 1 through 11 here. We need to tell Excel where the correct values are located in our spreadsheet. So, we'll start by right-clicking in the graph window. When you right-click this menu will appear. Choose Select Data. Pause the video and do this now. This is the window that will open. We want to edit the horizontal, category, labels. So click on the edit button on the right hand side of this window as shown here. Pause the video and do this now. In the next window that opens you need to type a very specific set of instructions. But, there is any easy way to do it. Click on the spreadsheet picture icon at the right hand end of the axis label range box, as shown here. Pause the video and do this now. Now, instead of typing in the cells, you can click and drag to highlight the possible two dice values. These are in cells K9 through K19. Pause the video now and highlight the cells in K9 through K19. The address for the correct label values has been added to the dialog box. To finish up this step, you now need to click on the picture icon at the right hand side of the dialog box one more time. After you click on the icon, go ahead and click OK. Click OK Pause the one video more and do time this and now. you should have the correct labels on the bottom axis of your graph. Here is what it should look like. There are two things left to do to complete this graph. We need a title and labels for the axes. We also need to move the graph to its own page. Like you did on your pie graph, look at the menu list at the top of the screen. On the right hand side you should see chart tools and layout beneath it. Click on Layout, pause the video and do this now. First, click on Chart Title, choose Above Chart, and then add a title with your name and two dice values as the title. Pause and do this now. Now, click on Axis Titles, choose Primary Horizontal Axis Title and then Title Below Axis. This title will be two dice values. Pause the video and do this now. For the Vertical Axis, Go back to Axis Titles, choose Primary Vertical Axis and then choose Rotated Title, as shown here. The Vertical Axis shows the number of times each value occurred. Pause the video and label your Vertical Axis now. The last task before printing is to move your graph to its own page. To do this, right-click on the white space above the legend, choose Move Chart, click New Sheet, and give your chart a name. Pause the video and do this now. Here is what your final graph should look like. Go ahead and print out a copy of this graph. This is the end of graphing in Excel. Congratulations! This program can do much more than what we've seen here, but this gives you an idea about how to get started. Goodbye.